Thank you, Jen. Uh, our next speaker is Greg Jenkins. Dr. Jenkins is, most importantly today, the reason we are all here. So let's give Greg a big round of applause for pulling this out. Dr. Jenkins, as you've already heard, is accomplished in his own rights. Um, he's a professor of meteorology, Penn State. He also directs the Alliance for Education, Science, Engineering, and Design in Africa at Penn State. He has a BS in Physics from Lincoln University and a Master's and PhD degrees from the University of Michigan. Like President Barron, he himself spent time at NCAR as a postdoc, and like President Barron, he was on the EMS faculty, left for another institution, in this case, Howard University, where he did some really important work, and uh, then fortunately for us, he's returned to Penn State in 2015. He's an expert in atmospheric chemistry, climate, and tropical meteorology, and he focuses research on West Africa these days. He's a fellow of the American Meteorological Society. So some meteorologists chase tornadoes, but Greg apparently chases Warren Washington. Dr. Jenkins. <laughs> Good afternoon, and uh, I want to thank again everyone for coming through. Uh, that, that, that's the most important thing that we're all here to honor Warren. Um, and his title is, you know, I, I'm a, I listen to jazz, and so there's this uh, Live at the Village Vanguard CD. It's called Chasing Train. <laughs> and they, uh, then they did a movie recently, a documentary called Chasing Train. And, and normally you don't want to chase anybody, really. You don't want to imitate. But I think there are some people who you just feel like chasing them is not a bad thing. And I think, in, in my mind, uh, Warren and the president, you know, they're, they're two people. I think they're difference makers. And uh, I, I think that's super important, the leadership, the way people govern themselves. So um, I think that chasing Warren, no matter if you were in fifth grade or a university student or graduate student, is a good thing. Um, so let's move forward, and, and these are reasons why I think Warren's worth chasing. Uh, scientific inquiry, as uh, ever talked about it this morning, really deep knowledge and understanding about how the climate system works. And that is so important because, in my opinion, it will be the most important problem of the century. Uh, innovator. I always feel like if you can't innovate, you can't do research because things always go wrong. And Warren is an innovator, multidisciplinary. I don't believe in staying in one discipline. You got to spread out. The real problems are across disciplines. And Warren kind of saw this very early on. I feel like that's important. Um, and a leader. Now, you know, I was I was going out to NCAR as a postdoc, and I always. And Warren was the director of CGD at the time. And I, I was always just amazed at his consistency. What was that, a 1988 10 Taurus? I always saw this car in the lot. And that was like super important to be like, he's here, he's here. Okay, if I had a problem, that meant I could potentially find you that day and talk to you about it. And I think that's important. So your open door policy is what I follow, actually for students, anyone. I keep the door well with the exception of Professor Fuentes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> almost everybody. <laughs> open door policy, no matter what. Uh, I'm always going to be there. And I got that from you, Warren. Um, so just like, and this goes back to what Everett said. Um, I met. Warren in 1989. He came for MLK Day at the University of Michigan. And uh, in those few hours, I mean just few hours, everything shifted. Um, and I was working on something, working with Bill Kuhn on the, the Archean, look at doing some things. But I immediately started reading your papers. I was like, let me find these papers. But th this part is what helped me to understand. It's like you don't stay in one place, you keep evolving. And then some of these papers go back, these are the early ones of Warren working, um, working with uh, Akira Kachara. And that was really, again, NCAR is really an important part of my foundation. 
um, others here, so numerical simulations of the Asian and African winter monsoon, uh, cloud feedbacks, all these things that I've thought about like in my own work. Uh, again, here's, here's Eric. And then here's the part where, you know, to me, Eric and Warren creates a completely, group, uh, completely different group of researchers, paleoclimate researchers. And that continues to this day. So uh, these were the, the early works, and they really were important for setting a foundation for others who followed. Uh, again, CO2, I guess the climate change story is a big one. So I've always felt like, hey, Warren, you're right there. You're pushing this thing forward. Uh, continue. And, and, you know, as you see, more complex models. So the, the initial model that I was using, okay, actually, let me just put this. So these are three people who I really admire. So you have Suki Manabe, Jerry Mill, and Warren Washington. I feel like they are the leaders. They've always been leaders. And the thing about them, they're all open. None of them are like, hey, I don't have time to meet with you, or you feel like you're on edge when you walk into your office. Well, Manabi's like, I gotta take a jog first. But <laughs> he loves running, but he's really an open guy. It's just amazing how these, uh, these, 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 these pioneers in climate modeling, how open they are. Now you can go for it. So, you know, I, I met Warren at that MLK uh, day, changed everything. Warren invited me out to NCAR during the summer. I had a 1978 Corona, rusted out on the sides. Michigan's pretty bad on soft. Took my, uh, my wife at the time, my two daughters, they were very young, and my son. And we drove all night to get to Boulder. And there I met Jerry, Linda Verplain, and they taught me everything that I needed to know from that big orange book, that CCM Zero A swamp model, <laughs> to get this thing going. I was running, I mean, I was going as fast as I could to learn everything that I could uh, be in error. And uh, I used it for the Archean and would confer with Warren um, that old modem that made all that noise, you know, you would be like, are you working? How's the runs going? That, that, that stuff was super important to continue forward. And I really don't think I would have gotten through Michigan without you. And I'm saying that because it was a question of direction, okay? It wasn't that my advisors were not leading me in the right direction. I just wasn't that inspired to do it. But I think that things really turned around um, when, you, when you got there. And that's the Cray XMP, and that, I don't know how many processors that had, but it was really slow compared to my uh, Macintosh. <laughs> but, was, but I get the work done, right? <laughs> okay, so Warren's a mentor. So here, Warren's the AMS president, and that was amazing too, to see him as the first African American as the AMS president. That, again, just mind shattering. You're thinking, hey, these, uh, as Vernon pointed out, these meetings, you just did not see people of color there. And so for Warren to rise to this level just took us to another level also. It was very important. So I have some bullets there, leader, you know, president. I felt like, just as Vernon said, gather us, it could be a small room, it could be wherever. That was one of the most important meetings. I mean, we did the papers, but that was the highlight, really. Warren giving us advice, talking to us about how we're doing. I think that's the checkup that you always need, because you're not really sure, but you know, you have someone really um, sincere about looking out for your interests. Always made time for students and scientists, so I've always called Warren whenever I had issues or not sure. That has always been the deal. And again, he's inspired a generation of scientists to mentor. He inspired us to mentor. Not, we know he's the mentor of Roma, but he inspired us to do it. So, and then service. So, he served the country. And I'd say, you know, each person has to serve in their own way. You know, you could do it this way, 
but you could do it anyway. You could do it locally. I think the service part requires, again, giving back. I mean, we're all busy, but if you don't do this, I feel like you're, something's not quite right with your career. If you just worry about your own stuff, knowing, in fact, in many cases, there are distressing issues going on in some communities. Okay. So, for me, the lessons from Warren are persist, learn, and be cautious, and, and, and be curious. Do work, deep work. So, it means you might not solve the problem in a few hours. You might not solve it in a few years, but you keep working at it, and you try to understand the problem more. Mentor, encourage, and give back. And I think this is a message that we have to give to our undergrads because um, today we all have our 3D or whatever you want to call it, cell phones, and we're, we're always looking into those. And it's like, okay, look at the person who's walking in front of you and think about what you could do. Maybe it's a hello. But given that's the smallest part of giving back. But we have to encourage our students to give back, and we have to give back, no matter how busy we are in our careers. Um, engage and serve the community in your own authentic way. Do it your way, whatever that is, but you got to engage and you got to serve. And of course, we've got to build learning communities across disciplines. Again, the problems are too complex. The models are good. We still need observations. We still need to talk to social scientists. We still need to talk to people in the humanities, etc. We we've got to build. We have to engage the communities. And I say most importantly is to inspire people not through your words, but through your actions. So it's like do work and inspire people through what you do. You know, don't just talk the talk, walk the talk. And it, and there are a lot of people in this room that are doing that. And they might not all be the same, but they're doing it, and that's what really matters. Okay, so Warren's legacy, you know, you see him over time in these pictures. And um, we'll all have pictures that will show us at various stages of our lives. But I've got some bullet points here. I feel like the best legacies are not necessarily buildings, although building 328, yeah. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Uh, the legacies are the ones that live within us. To me, that those are the most important legacies. We carry those every day. And I feel like it's a picture that Jose showed. Um, you know, Warren's legacy will persist because he spread his wealth. And he spread it to generations of scientists and to students. And that's really the most important thing. And at Penn State, we have this saying, like, we are Penn State. And for me, people, I tell them, I say, I, uh, I am Africa because Africa lives within me, right? And that is through not only work I do, but through my ancestors. But Warren Washington, we are Warren Washington. Okay. This, this entire group, he lives through us. So Warren, you know, I, I still have some issues about Michigan and Penn State, but <laughs> get in there. I'm almost there. Really, Coach Franklin has like converted me like 90%. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm happy to say we are Warren Washington.